Good day to you my fellow endoskeletons, I'm Kenator and welcome back to the channel. Do you feel like you're getting a bit lost behind the 500km range of the station transponders? Having trouble finding your friends in the belt and don't want to risk using your ship transponders? Well this one's for you. Welcome to ISAN. So let's start with what ISAN is. ISAN is a player designed GPS style system for Starbase. It is designed and developed by Collective. It's mega simple to add to your ships and requires next to no materials, which makes it super cheap. Now for what ISAN isn't, it's not going to be taking your position and sending it to anyone or anywhere, as there are no player transmitters in the game. It's also not going to be taking control of your ship in any way or make it self-destruct. Anyone that tells you otherwise is lying. So how does it work? Back when it was first developed in Starbase's closed alpha, it used transmitters from several dev-made stations. And the same is true here, but now we're in early access, the devs have helped out these sort of systems by placing more optimal transmitting stations. Not only that, they gave them a really cool look, and you can come and visit these stations too. You will find them above, below, to the left and right of the Great Ringle of Origin stations. It was really nice of Frozenbyte to give these stations a cool and unique look. With some fancy math and some even fancier coding, ISAM will give you an X, Y and Z coordinate for your position in relation to the centre of the ringle. X goes along the belt to the left, Y goes up from the belt above you, and Z goes into the belt. Note that these coordinates do not curve around with the belt and it is not a spherical system. ISAN can work in two modes, either mono or quad, and this relates to how many receivers are used for the system and both can be set up with only a single basic YOLO chip. However, if you use an advanced chip, you can have it give you a speed estimate for how fast you're moving as well. More on that in a bit. Adding this to your ship can be done in one of two ways. Firstly, I'll go over the more common use of existing ships. Many ships may come with the old ISAM from closed alpha pre-installed. Generally, you're looking for a green chip that sits next to a chip with a handle on it. This will be a memory chip. Both of these can be taken out and the green advanced chip can be reused once you've swapped out the old code for the new. Now check if you can find the receivers as these will need some changes as well. Sometimes they will be in the open, like in a grouping of four or just a single one. Sometimes they may be hidden within a ship, like on my buffalo design. Try and contact the ship designer for the ships that you use for more information if you are unsure. With the receivers found, you will need to rename some of the fields. So crack out your handy universal tool with the U button and make sure you are on the data tab. If you've had to switch tabs, be sure to reopen the tool and you should be seeing something like this. If it doesn't, then please make sure that you've used the tool on the ball part of the receiver, not the base. If the ship used the old ISAN, you will see letter and number named fields. If it didn't, you will see fields like these default ones. Note you can get back any default name for a device field by just simply deleting it to blank and hitting enter. This new version of ISAN needs these fields to be set up a little bit differently. For single receivers, change the signal strength to A and the target message to AT. Also please double check that your listen angle is set to 180. For quad setups, we follow the exact same process of removing the old and reset to default. And then for the second, third and fourth receivers, the names change a letter. So it would be B and BT, C and CT, and finally D and DT. Again, do double check the listen angle on all four is set to 180. And we're done with these, now back to the code. As I mentioned, you need but a single chip to run ISAN. So you can go and buy or you can craft a basic chip and load up the ISAN document linked in the description below. On page seven, you will find the code that you will have to copy line by line to the chip. This is where most people go wrong, either by doing a single line twice or missing a letter or symbol in the code. Now to make it a bit easier to edit these chips, please go to your settings and then under gameplay and camera, you will find this option to zoom in on YOLO chips when editing. You will totally want to turn this on as it makes editing chips way easier. I also recommend turning off the UI with F3 like I mentioned in my day one tips video as this will hide the chat and your hotbar and stop them getting in the way. After copying all 20 lines one line at a time, run through and check the first two and last two letters of each line. If these don't match, you'll need to recopy this line. And this is the most common problem people have. Now if the ship that you were using did have an advanced ship and you're reusing that, then you can enable a rough speed estimation as well as the coordinates. These ships have a green border to them to tell them apart from the basic blue ones. 
With this you can simply change the first line of the code, setting S0 equals 1 to 0 instead. And if you are doing this with a mono setup, you should also set the P0 equals 1 to 0 as well. The downside to these edits is that the code runs 0.2 seconds slower for each of these modes. And while this isn't much of a downside, it also is completely optional if you don't want it. This chip can then go into a free slot in your ship's YOLO racks. Most ships have at least one free space, or it can go back where you found it if you had the old ISAN. The last thing you'll probably need to find or add to the ship is a 24cm text panel. If your ship did have the old ISAN, this will be a display that reads POS, and nothing after it, or possibly a set of coordinates. So reuse this if it has it. If not, then you'll need to find space to add one. Once again, we can use our universal tool and change the name of POS to just a simple underscore. But by default, this will be called panel value. Again, change this to an underscore. With that, ISAN should boot up and give you a set of coordinates. If it doesn't, we'll tackle some common issues later in the video. Jumping into adding to a ship with no hardware or a ship design in progress in the editor, the process is pretty much the same, except you will need a few more bits to set this up. Firstly, one or four hard points for your receivers to sit on, and these will need to be cabled up. Secondly, a YOLO chip reader or rack also needs to be cabled up. And finally, again, the display. Except in the ship designer, you don't use the universal tool, you'll be using the properties window instead to change all these fields. If you've never used the ship designer before, I've just released an introduction to the UI of the designer as a primer and many more tutorials will be added as I make them into a playlist that I'll link in the description. First, the hard points will need to be placed in a square layout if you're using quad, and the closer the better. But if you can't get them in one spot on your ship, keep the distance between them equal in a larger spacing. Now get these wired up to your ship's cable network, and then you will need to put down the receivers. Now you will find there are two sizes of receivers, small and normal. There is no difference in use between the two, so save some resources and space and go for the small ones. Field names are named exactly as before, so I won't go over again, but you are looking for this window to change those names. For your YOLO chip, you have a choice of readers to add. The easiest is the YOLO chip socket. This is handy as you will have the chip facing up and you can edit it without removing the chip. The other, if you have more than a few chips to use in your ship, will be the YOLO rack and with the two slot rack to go inside it. You must use the two slot rack for your first rack since it has the cable point. Additional racks can be stacked on top or to the side of it, and these can use the three slot racks. Then same as before, put your code in a basic or advanced chip and plug the chip in. Setting up the text panel is best and easiest when put directly on a control table, since anything on the control table is automatically connected to the pilot chair base cable point. So with both methods, you should now be up and running. iSEN also comes with some interesting new features for early access. First is a new streamer mode. You can enter this by just deleting the text panel's value data with the universal tool. Just click in the box, hit Ctrl and A, and then delete and enter. The screen should now say streamer mode, and you can reboot iSAN by doing this one more time. iSAN can also have modules to upgrade its functionality, but at the time of recording, there are currently no extra modules. But previously in closed alpha, these have included waypoint saving, destination setting, and orientation alignment. Now let's talk about iSAN's limitations. That's right, it's not without its drawbacks. iSAN is currently limited to within 900 to 1000 kilometers of origin, and that's not a lot of the universe in the grand scheme of things. This will last up to about halfway through the belt when going directly out from origin. This means no far side of the belt or the moons. You will have to rely on ship and station transponders for these places. And that's if you're in range of any other ships or stations that you have the rights to view. If you've had any issues, then I may be able to help you troubleshoot them. Some common ones are defaulting to streamer mode. If you're getting this problem and rebooting isn't fixing it, please check your code, as you most likely have an error in the copying somewhere. If it says the receiver is damaged, then you either have done exactly that and damaged the first a named receiver. You can rename one of the undamaged ones if there is one, or this could also be a bug with transmitters in game as this has happened before. So be sure to check the official channels for any updates. And if your display reads nothing or zero, your text panel is most likely not connected to the ship's power and data network. One final thing worth mentioning is Star Map. This is a browser based 3D map of public, and if you log into Discord, private points for you. You can store locations of wrecks you have found good ore, your station, anything you like. This map is also run by Collective, and while promised to be as secure as possible, 
I can't personally guarantee this like I can for the ice and code itself. So use this at your own risk. But if you want to know any more about StarMap, I've made a video about this during closed alpha and you can view this via the link in the description. Now you know everything there is to know about ISAN. Go ahead and put it on your ships. I've always found the system to be very helpful for meeting up with other players and finding my way around. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, feel free to drop me a comment and a like. And if you want more Starbase videos, do please subscribe and hit the bell for more. Until next time, Kenator out.